Hey, what's up everybody? Stefan George I here. And right now I want to show you one of the biggest mistakes people make when using GPT-4 and what to do about it. So here's a quick background on this. I was going to make a video going through these uh, 10 kind of really good research prompts from a course I have called the six hour AI sales letter. You can't buy the course. Uh, I sold it when I did it live and then you can get it through our Genesis copyright mentorship program or, or copy accelerator pro, which is for business owners. But um, basically people were ripping off a lot of my prompts, including the journal entry one, which I'll show you in a second. And so I decided to post into the Facebook group we have, which is completely free, the AI marketers Facebook group and uh, go through all 10 of the prompts. What I'm gonna do instead is probably drip these prompts out through multiple videos, or you can of course go to AI marketers, it's uh, facebook.com slash groups slash the AI marketers, right? And there's a bunch of good content prompts, all that kind of stuff. But the point of this video, right, is I'm showing like I was gonna go through, and here's here's one of the first ones, which you may have seen other people ripping off since I came up with it. But write an emotional 1,000 word journal entry from the perspective of a man or woman who is list their primary pain point. He, she feels dominant negative emotions. Be creative, right? You want to capture the emotional negative state um, or the negative emotional state from a prospective customer. And then the next trick is you basically say, hey. Um, you know, now write a, well, I guess not the next trick, sorry, let me take that back. The next one is to have them do the same thing, but for the outside world, right? How does the outside world look at them? And as I put here, the difference is that we're focusing on basically feeling like the outside world is perceiving you in a negative way, right? So it's the pain of not being seen in the light that you desire. And then we tell them to rewrite it. Here's the trick, right? Rewrite it, but replace I with you, which again, I kind of, I'm the first person I know who published that. Other people now share freely, which is fine. But here's the poor, the poor, <laughs> here's the point I'm trying to make with this video and that's the mistake and what's really important. So I started shooting a video before and I'm like, all right, let me show people these prompts. So I did the journal entry from the perspective of a man who is struggling to get clients for his online coaching business. He feels frustrated and hopeless to be creative. Now I wanna show you the output I got, which I was, I'm not happy with, and I'll show you what we do about that, right? So. May 15th, 2023, today was a challenge, a mountain that I climbed, and yet it seems as if the summit remains an illusion, far off in the distance. I spent the whole day trying to drum up business for my online coaching practice, but it feels as though my efforts are being swallowed up by a vast and different universe. It's like trying to light a candle in a tempest. The wind doesn't even let the spark catch. Like, what the fuck is that? Uh, honestly, I don't often get inputs that are weird like this, but I did, right? Um, it's it's like they're talking about some of these pain points. I don't mind this part about it's hard, you know, feeling like a failure and, and taking it personally and saying it's hard not to when each no feels like a direct indictment of my worth and my value. I don't hate that, uh, but there's just like parts where it's just a bit too poetic. I feel the heavy weight of despair clinging to me like an unwanted shadow. I don't know why it's trying to be so melodramatic, but here's the really important part, right? When I get this output, and it kind of cut off for some reason too. But like, you gotta tell it, like treat it like an intern is the best advice. And this thing that Mario Castelli, my business partner, uh, along with Luke Mills, but Mario was the first to really talk about this regularly and it's so important. So like, what I mean is, be honest, right? Um, let me show you an example here. So it's like, thanks for that. I found this journal entry to be really melodramatic in some cases, and to not sound particularly realistic. I don't think this is how most people would write talk. I need you to redo this, but make the writing more aligned with how a typical coach would jot down notes and feelings and not so poetic, right? And now it's gonna do it again. I'll pause and we'll come back and do the output. You'll barely notice the pause, but that way you don't have to watch the whole output happening. All right, so let's look at this version from GPT-4. Tough day today, not gonna lie. It's disheartening when you're given, when you're given, I think I should say, when you've given your all to something and it just doesn't seem to be going anywhere. I put a lot of hours into this coaching business and it's hard not to feel a bit frustrated. Sign out a bunch of emails today, no responses yet. That's always rough. You try not to take it personally, but it's easier said than done. 
Each no feels like a punch in the gut. I'm constantly questioning if I'm good enough, if I've got what it takes. It's been a lot of work to get here, studying, getting certified, learning marketing, building a website, but for what? For an empty inbox and a silent phone? It's moments like these when I'm left wondering if I made a terrible mistake. Coaching, coaching others has always been my dream, my passion. I want to inspire people, help them reach their potential. But right now I feel like a fraud. How can I talk about overcoming obstacles when I'm wrestling with my own doubts and fears? I know what I tell a client in my shoes. Persevere, believe in yourself. Success is just around the corner. But right now those words feel like an empty lie. And then it moves into the sort of positive motivational part that it often does. But I think if you look at the copy here, or the, the, the output here, versus the initial, right, of like um, all these weird metaphors of like uh, the candle flickering in the wind or whatever it was, right, the weight of despair clinging to me like an unwanted shadow, uh, it's, it's significantly better, right? Um, and again, what, what we did, and I think what a mistake that so many people make is they sort of get the first output and go, oh, that wasn't that good, or they treat chat GPT uh, and generative AI tools like a um, like Google, and it's not Google. So treat it like an intern. Telling it, like the reason like an intern is because if you have an intern, you're like, hey, go get me a list of X, Y, Z things. And the intern brings it to you. Do you just say, perfect intern, thank you. Realistically, no. If you're a seasoned entrepreneur, you know the answer to that is no. You're more often going to say, okay, thank you, good start, but not perfect. Here's what I'm looking for. I actually want this, this, and this you're missing this information over here, you'd give them direction and have them refine, clarify, improve, iterate, things like that. And it's the exact same thing. Now, to go on to that trick of uh, you know, replacing I with you, that one's pretty easy. Just so you can see what that looks like, I'll pop that in here. And um, I'm gonna pause when we get the output, but I'll show you why that's valuable real quick too. Okay, so we always said replace I with you, right? Uh, tough day today, not gonna lie. It's disheartening when you're giving your all to something and it just doesn't seem to be going anywhere. You've put a lot of hours in this coaching business and it's hard not to feel a bit frustrated. You sent out a bunch of emails today, no responses yet, that's always rough. You try not to take it personally, but it's easier said than done. Each no feels like a punch in the gut. You're constantly questioning if you're good enough or if you've got what it takes. It's been a lot of work to get here, studying, getting certified, learning marketing, building a website, but for what? For an empty inbox and a silent phone? It's moments like these when you're left wondering if you've made a terrible mistake. Coaching others, now, by the way, this next part here, I would not assume that if I was turning this into copy where I was speaking to somebody in an ad or a video, right? I'd say, uh, you know, maybe coaching others has always been your dream. Maybe, perhaps, right, qualifiers. So we're not trying to say, some people, a lot of people, it wasn't always their dream, but, um, you know, they fell into it. So I'd want to be more conditional. So maybe coaching others has always been your dream or your passion. But you know, no matter whether you started recently or you've been doing this or something you've always wanted to do, uh, the point is you, know, you want to inspire people, help them reach their potential. But right now you feel like a fraud. All right? right now maybe you feel like a fraud. How can you talk about overcoming obstacles when you're wrestling with your own doubts and fears? You know what you tell a client in your shoes. Persevere, believe in yourself. Success is just around the corner. But right now these words feel like a lie. And then of course it moves into sort of this, uh, the positive part. But the, goal, the, the idea here is like how you could take some of this like you language and then put it right into your copy. If you're trying to you know, call out the prospect's pain point, things like that, you can be like, hey, perhaps you feel this way. Maybe you've gone through this, you do this, right? And of course, you could keep going. Um, there's a lot of other prompts you could do as well. Maybe I'll show one more while I'm, while I'm kind of vibing here, right? So I do want to show you, I mean, there's the write the uh, thousand word journal entry from a perspective of a man, woman, right? Um, in the list of pain point, focus on their observations about how the outside world looks at him, her, and treats him or her because he, she has their pain point and how that makes him or her feel the dominant negative emotions, be creative. So let me show you an example of that one. I'll actually show you three examples. Let me pop them in here. So you could do, for example, a woman struggling to lose weight her observations about how the outside world looks at her and treats her because she's overweight, how it makes her feel bad and insecure, uh, from the perspective of a man who's struggling to get his online coaching business going. Right, I'll, I'll do this one to keep the example congruent. You could do something about a guy who's worried about not having enough money to retire. So different options you could do. Let's stick with the coaching one to be congruent. Also, I honestly think weight loss is really easy with uh, AI, really a lot of the health stuff. But again, what I say here is like, okay, now, um, in the same voice, um, oh, 
hopefully that's good. Because again, I'm telling it, what I'm trying to tell it is don't be melodramatic and poetic again, right? So let's see what happens here. I'm going to do this, and I'm going to pause again so you don't have to watch it type out the whole output. Okay, I stopped, like, I stopped the generation because it was going off the, the positive part. There's actually some really good copy. So two interesting things happened. One, because I said the same voice as before, so it actually went right to saying you instead of um, I, which is actually helpful, right? There's no issue with that. Um, this, I didn't like the way this opened out. But again, the goal here is not that we're getting the entire thing is going to be copy and pasted into an ad or a sales letter. The goal is getting chunks of good copy that you can pull out and put into an ad or a sales letter, right? Um, and so let's look at this real quick. Today was a mirror of sorts. The world has a way of reflecting back to you the image you're trying to hide, and it's not always the most forgiving mirror. You're, I mean, it's not bad. It's interesting. You're running this online coaching business, and you're struggling. The clients are coming as quickly as you'd hoped, or aren't coming as quickly as you'd hoped, and the bills are piling up. You feel a twinge of embarrassment every time you meet someone and they ask about your job. The words online coach seem to hang in the air, followed by the inevitable question, so is that going well? You try to muster up an enthusiastic, yes, it's great, but you're not sure if they buy it. You can see it in their eyes, the silent judgment, the unasked question, but are you making any money? It's even worse with family and old friends. They mean well, they really do, but their concern feels like a weight. They ask about your business, your clients, your income, and each question is a reminder of how far you have left to go. You see the worry in their eyes and it stings. You feel like a disappointment, a failure. You try to brush it off to convince them and yourself that it's just a slow start and that things will pick up soon. But with each passing day, that soon feels like a distant dream. The doubt creeps in, gnawing at your confidence, making you question your decisions, your abilities, your worth. You're trying to sell a service, a product, an experience, and every rejection feels like a critique of your value. Every silent email, every unanswered phone call, each no feels like a confirmation of your worst fears that you're not good enough that you're not capable enough. It's frustrating to struggle. You've always been good at what you do. You've always been the one people turn to for advice, for guidance. You've made a difference in so many people's lives. And yet, when it comes to making this a business, a livelihood, it feels like you're hitting wall after wall. There's some good copy in there. This part right here is phenomenal. So think about it this way too. You're sort of, sort of mining for gems, right? You're sort of mining for nuggets and you'll get them. That is a phenomenal nugget. And so again, taking this, putting it into an ad, a sales letter, a webinar script, whatever it is, this is how you use GPT for copy, especially long form copy. Now there are templates that you can create, like we have for our agency, CA Labs, and we share these in Copy Accelerator Pro, which is for business owners and a bit in Genesis as well. We've got like 2000 word templates that just spit out uh, creatives, ads, advertorials things like that. I'm, you know, eventually we'll share some of those on YouTube. I'm going to be careful because they're really powerful. Um, maybe if you really want me to share one of the templates, put it in the comments. That would be really good because if you put it in the comments uh, and I get a lot of comments, I can show Mario, uh, my business partner, who comes up with a lot of these. Hey, dude, the people want it. So maybe if you really want to see like a 2000 word template that will generate a phenomenal uh, email or ad or whatever we end up uh, picking, put it in the comments. Uh, but regardless, this is like a super valuable thing. So I hope that you can see that. I hope you can see how valuable this is. And I hope you get, again, that really important point about treating GPT like an intern and asking follow-up questions and asking it to refine and having interactive conversations. It is not Google. It is not a one-way static thing where you ask a question, get a response, and that's it. This is a conversation partner, a writing partner, a brainstorming partner, all of those things. If you keep that in mind, you will have significantly more success with things like ChatGPT and GPT-4 or BARD or whatever model you're using than if you do not. So that's the video for now. Uh, again, comments if you want to see a, a really incredible 2000 plus word template that will basically write an email or ad for you and it's like good to go. Also, if you want to see the rest of these prompts, let me know in the comments and go over to AI Marketers facebook.com forward slash groups, the AI marketers, and uh, you can see the full list here. And that picture of me, by the way, is generated with AI, which is pretty cool as well. All right, that's it for now. Thank you. Make sure you're subscribed to me if you're not already. Bye.